Once, I was on a quest for cyan. I saw so many beautiful images filled with cyan, just like this beautiful and remarkable image of the heart and fish head nebulae. And I sought hard to put more cyan in my images, which is no easy thing when you're shooting with RGB and Dell RGB because the truth is, while there is some blue in space, there isn't that much. And in most cases, it has to be teased out of an image. Now, in narrowband palettes, that's relatively straightforward because the colors that we perceive in a narrowband image have simply been assigned to the information. For example, in many if not most color schemes, hydrogen and sulfur are represented as red and green. But in reality, hydrogen and sulfur are both red of very nearly the same frequency, meaning they appear almost alike. Since when working with narrowband, one can simply assign whatever colors they want to the information presented, it's more straightforward to tease out the colors that you're looking for. When working with any kind of broadband information, where the primary colors, red, green, and blue, fall where they naturally do within the information, finding blue is somewhat more challenging. We get depictions of the colors of deep sky objects that are much closer to how our human eyes would perceive them. When imaging deep sky objects, the primary source of blue light's emissions is ionized oxygen. And while there is plenty of oxygen in deep space, it is typically drowned out by far more common ionized hydrogen. And there's also the reality that ionized oxygen emits a color that is right on the edge between green and blue. It really appears more as a blue-green. This is why when broadband images are shot, even with a monochrome camera, which doesn't have the green bias that one-shot color cameras do, the blue comes out looking a bit washed out or blue-green and in my photos, I adjust this by pulling down on the green channel just a little bit to purify the blue and transform it into that lovely cyan that our human minds find so appealing. For a long time, like many astrophotographers, I had sought to put that beautiful cyan blue in many of my images where, in point of fact, it doesn't belong. For example, if you shoot the Sol Nebula in color, it doesn't look like this. It looks like this. All those lovely shades of blue were simply injected into the image. They don't really belong. So, as I find myself questing more to relate the true colors of an image in ways that remain beautiful and compelling, I also found myself moving away from the very common modern tendency to force cyan or any blue into every image. I can see doing so as a form of artistic license or when it's appropriate for scientific methodology. And there is no doubt that the injected blue is absolutely beautiful. But the reality is, if we want to portray reality, then very often the sign in many of the blues depicted in nebulae and so many DSOs just doesn't belong. But if we don't inject those blues, can we make peace with that? Or in other words, will the image still be beautiful? In my more recent attempts to make peace with the natural colors of DSOs and find and depict the beauty contained within, I've been attempting to answer that question, and I've come to believe that yes, we absolutely can. Where blue or cyan is found naturally with an image, by all means bring it out, but where it isn't, there is a different kind of beauty. An amazing skyscape of other colors and place of light and shadow, textures and implied busyness, all of which are important in depicting any deep sky object in its own unique and special way. In fact, staying true to a deep sky object's true color might well make the image more interesting because it honors its uniqueness. If every DSO is portrayed with cyan or with any colors injected just because we like them, then we run the risk of making every image's colorscape look just like the other. As an example of where this direction can take us, I present a few of my more recent images, wherein I have remained true to depicting the colors contained within the image's information. Blue with air is blue, red where there is red, and any other color, if, when, and how it presents itself. And at all times, I made it a point never to desperately seek cyan. And to be honest, I've been very happy with the results. Perhaps the reason we like to see blue so much in deep sky objects is that the color has a deep appeal to our basic human nature. We humans are creatures that have evolved in a world where the sky overhead is usually a beautiful blue. Thus, I suspect the love of that color is deep, instinctive, even genetic, just as green also appeals to us. Green for the foliage wherein we find our food and much of our shelter. 
But while we humans are evolved for Earth, we are not evolved for the cosmos at large. If we were, we'd probably all have rocket engines and the ability to see the entire electromagnetic spectrum. And while that might be incredibly cool, if somewhat freaky, I find over the years that I have done astrophotography that my movement is more to be honest with the cosmos, to respect it enough to let it be what it is, rather than trying to turn it into something I want it to be. Something I might personally or genetically find visually appealing. And I think my images are the better for it. Staying true to the colors presented within the information makes every DSO uniquely itself. Thank you for watching this relatively short video. As with the last video, this is more about philosophy of photography than photography itself, but that matters. The techniques that we adopt and our approach to the information, from how we shoot it to how we ultimately develop it, ultimately comes down to our philosophical approach. What are we trying to present within the information? I think an artistic bent is entirely valid. A scientific approach is entirely valid, of course. But over the years, I find myself leaning deeper and deeper into the approach of letting the information be itself. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Now, get out there and shoot the sky.